<laughs> so as people are gathering together, I'm going to try and see if um, if this is coming through. And I just want to do a couple of quick introductions um, because it's it's fantastic to have and very appropriate to have uh, a blended approach, as we've come to call it, it's in Luke's and in other places, and in the Manchester Earhart Seminar of people uh, present in the physical universe and people present in the digital universe. We no longer use real and virtual because part of the thing that Paul Fiddes and I debated at great length when I was writing this book is that the digital universe is just as real as the physical and material universe. So I've stopped using the word uh, virtual in that sense. It was, it was when I was involved with the Second Life project online and they're where they buy and sell virtual real estate. And the combination of virtual and real in virtual real estate and the turnover of virtual real estate on Second Life is more than a good number of African countries' GDPs. Uh, so, um, so I want to say how delighted that we are on Zoom. Um, I'd like to welcome a number of people who were part of the Zoom communion group. Uh, Mitzi Buddy, who is the librarian of Virginia Theological Seminary, who will be spending the next two months supplying me with more and more books, um, and who takes it as a personal affront if she doesn't have or any book I want on her shelf as a matter of course. And without Mitzi's hard work, none of my books would ever have been written. Uh, Mitzi's been part of the group, so beaming in every week uh, from Virginia. Uh, Ros Oliver, Dr. Ros Oliver, and her husband Gordon at the bottom, um, members of, of the group, and Gordon and Ros uh, had the misfortune to have me as an ordinary student in their parish um, back in the mid-80s, uh, living in the vicarage, and um, Gordon's been trying to sort my theology out ever since, and he'll be speaking a bit later tonight. Uh, Peter Eccles, Professor Peter Eccles from Manchester University, um, who is a Quaker, who has hosted the Zoom communion, and I think it's been rather appropriate to have a, a Quaker uh, hosting a sacrament on, 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 online, and um, uh, I believe very much spiritually receiving the benefits of the real presence of Christ in, in the blessing as we do. Uh, Paul Fiddes, of course, very distinguished professor of systematic theology at Oxford, uh, leading Baptist and ecumenist, um, who have been thinking about these are things for quite some time with the cathedral on, on Second Life. Uh, so we're delighted to, to have him. He joined us a, a few times online. And got at the bottom there, Dr. Christopher, Professor now, so Christopher Southgate, uh, formerly um, principal of the Southwest Ministry Training Course, who's joining us coming in from uh, Devon, who was also part of the Zoom communion group. I think that's, so there's a good representation of the group. Um, I'm delighted also that we have Michael Thompson, who was my editor at Erdman's for many years, and now my editor, uh, commissioning editor at Whitfinsop, who's joining us from Grand Rapids in, in Michigan. And underneath him, and who will be speaking shortly, is the Reverend Dr. Robin Parry, who is an Anglican priest in Worcester Diocese, Robin, I think. Um, and then he also works, is an editor for Whitfinsop, and I have to say, um, and, and Michael knows this very much to his cost, uh, and some of you will not find this hard to believe, I don't like being edited, <laughs> and, and Robin has been a superb editor, and some people have been incredible, incredible patience. Um, and then good to have a, a race of bishops, uh, Bishop David Walker, Bishop of Manchester, and Bishop Michael Lickgrave, Bishop of Litchfield. Um, Bishop Michael is currently chairing the House of Bishops Working Group on Holy Communion Online, and um, I, I, I just made his life a bit more difficult by the articles in this week's Church Times. Uh, but Michael is an old friend of this area because he was Archdeacon, uh, well, and other things in this diocese, I think, weren't you? Oh, yeah, yes, and then, then yes, of course, uh, and then Bishop. So um, delighted to have uh, Michael, Bishop Michael with us, and Bishop David was uh, somebody who has joined us in the Zoom communion group from time to time, uh, although in company with one with Bishop Pierre, who isn't with us at least yet, he's usually he's often late anyway, um, hasn't felt able to actually join in in an attempt of collective responsibility with the bishops. Um, and there is uh, Kathy Grebe, a professor of New Testament at Virginia Seminary, also. 
coming to us from across the states. Um, and uh, very good to have Ian Cascart from St. Luke's with us, and we're expecting Julie Wren from St. Luke's, and we have my daughter, uh, Rebecca. And then in, in the group gathered here, Mike, do feel free to come and uh, uh, join us. And there's not sort of a huge crowd of people <laughs> buying books just at the moment. Um, we're delighted to have the, uh, the vicar and the curate of St. Luke's Holloway. Chapter 14 in the book is all, all about what goes on in St. Luke's. So uh, very, very good to have, to have John and, and his wife Sophie with us and Lizzie the curate. I uh, mentioned Rebecca just now. There are two of Rebecca's godparents here, her godfather Don and her godmother uh, Jane. Jane was my literary agent for Four Gospels of Jesus back in the 90s and has helped out editing many of, many of the books. Um, and um, very good to obviously have uh, the Bishop of Southwark here with us. Um, and he's been a tremendous support to, to me. Um, and I don't know what, what, what it is, but I mean, he, he's got one of my former secretaries as his secretary, and one of my students and all of as his chaplain. So uh, <laughs> I hope I've been helping you in that. Respect. And, and many good friends also uh, from St. Luke's. But without any further ado, um, it's very naughty of me to be speaking first, because of course the first person to speak in any cathedral must be the Dean. So ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the Dean of Southwark, Andrew Nutt. Thank you. It's uh, lovely to see all of you on the screen and you here in this library. And really good to have people from the States joining in. Um, we've got a very good relationship, historic relationship, with the United States of America through John Harvard, who was baptised here, went to our parish school and all of that. So um, we continue a, a good association, I hope, with the people of the United States and the church in the United States. And uh, Richard is always very naughty, isn't he? That's one of the things we quite like about Richard. And there's, there's, a, there's a sense of naughtiness, I think, around this talk. Okay, so he rang me earlier today and said, has your church times arrived? And uh, one of the things that I have to tell you is that the host in Southwark, particularly in SC1, is appalling. So I normally get my church times in the The church times, that's what it looks like, because I don't get to see it until Wednesday at the earliest, um, by which time it is ancient history. But there are two articles in the church times about Dr. Burridge's latest book that uh, we're here to hear about. And I'm particularly looking forward to next week's edition of the Church Times. <laughs> and the expanded and then letter the column. Peter, could you, put the, could you put the cartoon up while... Yeah, put the cartoon up, Peter. That, that will distract me from what I'm saying. No, no, no. Um, so because the letters column next week, they'll have to put a separate edition, I think, of the Church Times for the first and only time uh, that uh, Richard will have provoked. There we are. <laughs> There is so much truth in these cartoons. <laughs> and that's before Dave Walker has had a, a chance to have a go at it. So that because people are bound to react in a variety of ways. And I think, I'm sorry I can't be with you for this evening, um, but I think that there will be a variety of responses as well, because this is a live issue. It's an issue that we've been forced into in lots of different ways um, during this pandemic as to what the nature of worship is, what the nature of community is, um, as well as what the nature of the Eucharist is when we are not in the same physical space, even though we, we're gathered in other kind of spaces at the same time. So I'm, I'm, I may not always agree with what Richard has to say, as Richard knows, um, but that doesn't stop me really appreciating what you ever fact, agree with I don't think I've ever agreed with you, but anyway. <laughs> That didn't stop me really appreciating the fact that you put this out on the table, because unless it is out there, we can't actually talk about it, and we need to talk about it. Now, at the moment, the, the Church of England is slightly traumatised around the issue of a chalice or separate cups for communion. Um, and so that will, I'm sure, be something when we meet in, in a 10 days time in General Synod, that will be something that comes up. This takes us even beyond that. So, Richard, I want to say, as, as I welcome everybody here, 
uh, for this evening. I want to say a very big thank you on behalf of the Church of England, and I, I, I don't mind being quoted, Dean of Southwark, thanks Richard Burridge for writing this book, because I think that you're, what you're going to do is to provoke a really, really good conversation, uh, which will help us understand what we believe happens, both uh, when we celebrate the Eucharist together, but also something about the nature of sacraments and what real presence is on about. And I think whether whatever bit of the church you're from, whatever your tradition, that is something that we need to engage with. And I'm, I'm delighted that there are some bishops here who will help us to engage with that, won't you? Yes. So I'm, I'm not going to take any more of your time, but enjoy, enjoy your time here. And I believe that I have to hand over to you, Robin, who are going to take us into the next stage of this conversation. Thank you. Um, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Am I, am I on? Is, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. We'll put you on the main screen, I hope. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the publisher, Whip and Stock. Uh, it seems a bit weird to welcome you to a place I've never been before, but I have been to Zoom, so welcome to Zoom. It was back on the 6th of May 2020 when my colleague Michael Thompson, who's right here now, uh, brought the proposal to us. And it was a bit of a no brainer from our perspective as a publisher. It's a book by an internationally respected scholar, Richard Burridge, on a topic of major concern to Christians around the world, particularly right now. And it was a book that it was a topic that was of particular interest to me as well, um, because I had just about the week before the proposal came in, posted a video with my own views about online communions, and they resonated very much with the kinds of things that Richard was saying. So I leapt on the proposal um, and, and argued that, uh, that I'd like to edit it, I, and they let me, so that was great. The original plan, as I'm sure Richard will make clear, um, was that this would be a little book, slightly expanding a position paper that he'd written, and it would be turned around very quickly and then it would be out in the shops within a couple of months of, of, of when we commissioned it. It was some crazy schedule for some little book, but it turned out not to be that way. And the book, as I'm sure you'll agree when you read it, is the better for it. Because as Richard looked into the issues more, it turned out to be a lot more complicated than anyone had originally appreciated. And Richard was very keen to do justice to the matters, especially issues that had received little previous attention. And Richard, as you will know, is nothing if not meticulous. And so that's how an 18 month journey began of Richard researching, writing, sending me material to edit, rewriting it, re-editing and so on, until we reached the final product, which is there today. And speaking for myself, it's been a privilege to have worked with Richard through these issues and watched him constantly rethinking his views, always open to being surprised. And that's the mark, in my view, of a good thinker and a good scholar. The edit was completed on the 30th of October, and then there was this very speedy turnaround to get it out and print ready for the end of December, and then here tonight. And it's a much bigger book now, and it's a much more rigorous book. But for that reason, it's one that breaks new ground and it can't be ignored. And as a publisher, we're very proud to be able to serve